hopefully the physical interpretation of this resistance and capacitance will be meaningful. But in general when you have complex reaction it is not possible. So, what do we do? This is supposed to be reversible. Okay. We want to say this impedance spectrum can originate from this reaction and we want to say when I make some changes the reaction has changed like this. We would like to say A going to B actually happens in steps A goes to some intermediate species B goes to the product or oh, sorry A goes to intermediate species intermediate species goes to the product B or A goes to intermediate that intermediate goes to another intermediate and then it goes to the product reversible reaction or I can say A goes to intermediate 1, it goes to intermediate 2, it goes to product, A can also directly go here that is a possibility. Many possibilities exist, many of the reactions of importance do not happen in one step. Okay. If we say two hydrogen ions take two electrons and form a hydrogen molecule and go out as gas bubble, it does not happen in one step, it happens through multiple steps. Similarly, oxygen evolution reaction to oxygen reduction reaction, those reactions do not normally happen in one step, they happen through multiple step. Okay. If they happen through multiple step, can we find out what are the rates of each step? If you know which step is slower step you can hope to increase it or if you want to suppress something you can say this I want to reduce it further, you can have a better idea. You prepare a catalyst, you want to characterize the catalyst, you want to characterize the reaction occurring through the catalyst, you want to look at the spectrum not one spectrum you have to look at few spectra together and then say this is probably what is happening here, this is the mechanism. Now that is not very easy. What we want to learn here now in the beginning is to say if I know the reaction I can tell these are the spectrum that I can get. So, you get a feel for what type of reactions can give you what type of spectrum. Remember in the electrical circuit also initially we said if you have a capacitor resistor arranged like this you will get a spectrum like this. You have an arrangement with more capacitors you will get a spectrum like this. Now, if I get a spectrum like this I know I can model with this circuit. Likewise, I would like you to become familiar with the process of first proposing a reaction, proposing rate constants and then saying if this is the reaction, this is the rate constant, I know how to generate the spectrum. At different DC potentials it will give me this type of spectrum. Now the reverse problem you can attempt after knowing how to do the forward problem because reverse problem involves optimization. You have to propose a reaction, vary the rate constant and then see whether you can fit all the spectra nicely. In order to do that first if I give you the reactions and if I give you the rate constant you should be able to generate the spectrum only then you can say I will vary this and fit this. If I cannot even generate this I will not be able to do the optimization. So, first I want to start with a simple reaction. This although the species looks complex reaction is considered simple, it is called ferro ferry redox couple. usually these are not written okay. Of course, these are in solution with solvated ion we do not even bother about this we just say ferro ferry couple it is one ion molecule ion atom surrounded by cyanide molecule. The reason this is considered simple reaction is because this does not need rearrangement of any of these atoms. This FeCN6 whole group gets an electron or gives an electron without rearrangement of this that means it can happen without it adsorbing going through any rearrangement and coming out. If I just take Fe2 plus ion usually it is surrounded by water molecules, water dipoles. If I want to put it on a surface and remove an electron or if it is Fe3 plus I want to add an electron I have to remove this water molecule. It has to adsorb, it has to spend some time there, remove that water molecule then put it when it goes out it will again get hydrated. 
whereas here because it is a large molecule it does not have that much charge per unit volume it does not attract that much of water dipole or I should not say that I should say water dipole is not bound strongly to this it is easy to give or take an electron from this. So, this is normally taken as a classical system in our lab if we suspect something is wrong we take gold electrode ideally we should use a platinum electrode put this measure the spectrum if it comes correctly we are okay if it does not come correctly maybe the reference electrode is not good maybe the instrument has some problem we have to sort it out this is something where we expect it to behave nicely this we will call it as A and B had different charges or I can say A going to B plus plus electron reversible reaction. Now, the forward rate constant I will call it as K subscript F reverse I will call it as K subscript R and the square brackets indicate this is the concentration I should use activity, but I will use concentration saying activity coefficient is 1. So, the net rate is forward rate which is K F multiplied by F E 2 plus F E 2 plus is the representation here F E 3 plus is used to represent this this group net rate is going to be forward minus the reverse. Now, the rate constants because it involves electron transfer meaning forward reaction gives an electron reverse reaction takes an electron they will change with potential that rate constant associated with this will change with potential. So, I am writing the Kf as Kf 0 exponential Bf and DC potential. Now, I am going to apply only DC potential later I will show you what happens when you apply AC potential. First we should know what to expect when you apply a DC potential this Kf and Kr I am replacing with or using the expanded version of this. Bf tells how much the forward rate will increase if I change the potential. Br tells how much the reverse rate constant will increase or decrease if you change the potential. Now, I have taken some values ok reasonable values for system it depends of course, on the electrode surface if you give graphite I will get a different type of reaction or different rates. I have taken the concentration of ferro and ferri to be 5 millimolar I had taken the value of B forward and B reverse to be close to 20 plus and minus sign with inverse of voltage as the inverse of volts as the units. Again these are reasonable numbers this B f is actually going to be n alpha f by r t r is the universal gas constant t is the temperature in Kelvin f is the Faraday constant n is the number of electrons involved which means it is 1 here alpha is what is called charge transfer coefficient. Now, I take alpha to be 0 0.5 and B r is going to be minus 1 minus alpha n is 1 here. So, I am not writing it here f by r t. So, if I take alpha to be 0 0.5 then this is going to be same as this with a negative sign 1 minus alpha is also going to be 0 0.5. So, I have used some temperature I think 25 or 28 Celsius to get this value. I taken solution resistance to be 0 mass transfer to be rapid that means concentration of 3 and 2 will not be different when I apply a potential it will still remain the same whatever is consumed will be replenished very quickly whatever is produced will go out quickly concentration is maintained uniformly everywhere. Now, if I calculate the rate and multiply the rate with Faraday constant net rate tells how many electrons are released Faraday constant tells how to convert this to current in coulombs rate is of course, moles per square centimeter per time. So, I will effectively get amperes coulombs per unit time per square centimeter. So, this is current milliamp per square centimeter I suppose it is not coming out nicely and it is going to look like this in the linear scale when I plot current versus potential this is actually going to go like this this first term is going to exponentially increase and here it goes towards 0 this is negative right. So, it is coming here and this B r is negative that means 
the second term is given by the line at the bottom. Algebraic sum of these two gives us the green color line which goes through 0. At EDC to be 0, KR0 and KF0 are equal, FE2 plus and FE3 plus are equal, BR and BF are different but exponential raise to 0 voltage will give me 1 here, exponential raise to 0 voltage will give me 1 here. So, I will get net current to be 0 here which also means I cannot really write KF0 and KR0 as independent. EDC when that is 0 the net current has to be 0. That is how we want to choose the reference for DC. So, this current when it passes through 0 that is called open circuit potential and our DC potential should be written with respect to that potential not with respect to reference electrode because your reference electrode if you change the reference electrode that potential will change. Okay, but this is what we will expect to get here. I just moved it here. Now, I want to apply a AC potential and I want to calculate the impedance. If I apply AC potential, I can write the potential as DC plus AC. DC I will write it as EDC, AC component I will write it as the amplitude. So, in our notation EAC0 is the amplitude. So, I will call this curve as AC curve, I will call this as EAC0. So, EAC is a function of time. EAC0 is something that we fix. Now, if I write the rate constant, I can expand it as function of potential, I can expand that as a DC and AC, I can separate the DC and AC because they are in the power and then I can expand EAC as EAC0 sin omega t. Now, KF0 can be large or small, BF EDC can be large or small, I am not worried about those. I want to say EAC0 is a small number and correspondingly I want to say BF EAC0 is a small number. That means in the previous graph this is 0 voltage for DC, this is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.2 voltage, does not matter I can be here and apply sinusoidal voltage, I can be here and apply sinusoidal potential, I am not making any assumptions regarding DC voltage. I want to make an assumption that this is a small voltage. So, if I apply 5 millivolt, 10 millivolt, sometimes even 20 millivolt, you might get spectrum in the linear regime with reasonably good signal to noise ratio. If I apply 1 millivolt, I am definitely in the linear regime, but I may not get again I should not say I am definitely in the linear regime, for many system I will be in the linear regime, but I may not get a good signal to noise ratio. I think what we will do is continue tomorrow with the expansion and truncation to show how you can get the impedance for this particular reaction. We will stop here today. Now, we will go back to this RMA. So, yesterday we saw that you have a reaction A going to be reversible. We can write the rate constant as a function of potential. We assume that the concentration of these two reactants and products they are the same meaning they do not change with time, they are replenished very quickly as soon as they are consumed or produced, diffusion is fast and on the surface the concentration remains the same. And if you apply DC plus AC, the first example you can split the potential into DC component and AC component and at that stage I think we left. You can look at this, E power x you can write it as Taylor series. Since x here is b forward EAC0 sin omega t and sin is going to be between plus or minus 1. So, if b EAC0 is a small number, I can truncate it after this. So, I can write it is approximately equal to 1 plus x. This is called linearization. So, this is an approximate symbol. This number need not be small, it can be small, it can be large, we are not making any assumptions about EDC we are not making any assumption about KF0. The assumption we make to bring this expression to the expression below is that EAC0 into B forward is a relatively small number. 
which case I can write this part as Kf at DC potential of EDC and this EAC 0 sin omega t I can write it as EAC. EAC is a time dependent function, EAC 0 is a constant. So, we are okay with this. So, I will write the Kf as approximately equal to Kf DC 1 plus Vf EAC and K reverse as K reverse at the DC condition multiply by this. That means, if I apply a potential here, K forward has a value somewhere here, it is a DC potential. If I change it a little up and down, this also is expected to change only a little and that can be linearized. Of course, if I change it a lot, this relationship will not be linear. So, if I say Kf as a function of EDC is actually a curve, it is exponential curve. What I mean is at a small variation, I can say this is a linear. So, even if I have an exponential curve, at this EDC, this is the slope. Another EDC, it will be slightly different slope. But this region, I can linearize it, this region, I can linearize it, this region, I can linearize it. All of them will not have the same slope, but I can approximate at each DC, I can approximate it with some slope. Now, if I make this gap a large gap, that means if I make the ES0 a large value, this will be a poor approximation. When it is small value, this approximation holds good. So, I am making it piecewise linear. If I choose the pieces to be small pieces, it is good. If I choose them to be large ones, it would not be good. Now, I can write the rate k f 0 under d c condition when I do not have any a c this is correct. If I have a c the current is Faraday constant multiplied by the rate because rate is net rate is telling us the number of electrons produced by this reaction. So, this is approximately equal to K f 1 plus B f E a c because here when it is D c I can use this, when it is A c I should use E a c 0 sin omega t, but because I can use the approximation with the assumption that E a c 0 is small, I can say approximately this is equal to K f F e 2 K r F e 3. So, the current can be written like this as an approximation. Now, DC current is going to be without any AC, this DC current is easy to calculate, it is just simplified version. It is Kf DC, Kr DC multiplied by Fe2 and Fe3 concentrations. When I use AC along with DC, I get a current, I am going to write it as DC plus IAC. So, when I apply only a DC potential, I get a DC current. I maintain that potential, I get that current. I superimpose meaning I add an AC to that. Now, the current will also start moving up and down. The net current that I get, if I give DC, this is E, this is I. Of course, different scales here, this is time. Up to this time, I am giving DC, I will get DC current here. So, this is not 0, 0 may be here, this is some value and this is another value. Here I start giving AC potential on top of DC, I will start getting a AC current. Of course, there is going to be a transient from here to here, I am going to skip it, it is going to look like this. So, this current I can say this is IDC plus IAC. So, DC part is going to be F KF DC 1 Fe 2 plus K R D C 1 F E 3 plus because that is going to be a constant. A C part is going to be the remaining part. The remaining part here is F is there, K F D C is here, B F E A C I am keeping the B F here, I am pulling out the E A C at the end. Likewise, F is still outside, K R D C is here, B R E A C I am keeping the B R here, pulling the E A C here as a common factor. So, I am taking this expression, splitting it into AC and DC components. 
Now I can write IF AC is the remaining part here. The impedance that we measure using the experimental setup is differential impedance. I give a small sinusoidal, I look at the resulting current and find out the sinusoidal oscillation there. I am not looking at E by I, I am looking at E A C by I A C, which means I should get rid of these things. Out here, if I take E A C, divide by I A C here, all that it means is I need to make this 1 by F and so on. So, for this reaction, we can calculate the impedance coming from this reaction. In order to do that, we need to calculate EAC by IAC. EAC is what we apply. IAC is coming from the reaction rate, you can calculate IAC. And to calculate the reaction rate, you need the rate constant. The rate constant depends on potential. So, the rate constant changes with EAC. And it is actually exponentially related to EAC. We are just truncating it saying, e power x can be approximated as 1 plus x. With that, it is easy to get the analytical expression. Now, this E A C by I F, this is Faraday current. So, the impedance is called Faraday impedance. This does not depend on omega. There is no omega in this. This is basically a simple resistor. If I draw current DC current as a function of DC potential, it goes like this. If this is my EDC, I get a current here, this will actually go via 0, that is ok. This slope gives me d i by d e, inverse of the slope is going to be d e by d i and that will give me a constant value. That resistance is going to be the Faraday impedance for this particular reaction that is the resistance at 0 frequency, infinite frequency, any intermediate frequency. If we keep the DC potential here, this is going to have a different slope. I will get a different value because Kf DC will be different. Bf is a constant. Fe 2 plus and Fe 3 plus, we are assuming we are using the same solution. So, that is also going to be a constant. Kf DC depends on EDC. So, if we superimpose that one potential, I am going to get one impedance. If we superimpose at another potential, I will get a different impedance. But all the data in general can be modeled using this circuit, where R1 is the solution resistance, this is the double layer capacitance, this is one resistance which depends only on EDC, and of course, assuming solution concentrations are remaining the same, the electrode is the same, etcetera, etcetera. Z Faraday will not depend, I will depend. Okay. In this particular example, IAC is related to EAC by this. This is proportional to EAC, that means that is a constant and this is correct when we use small amplitude perturbation. That is one. Second, for this reaction, when you have more complex reaction, it would not become, it would not be simplified like a resistor you will have much more complex patterns there. If I increase the sinusoidal perturbation, meaning I have one DC voltage, let us say I have 0 0.1 voltage with respect to OCP, open circuit potential. It has a non-zero DC current. I applied 5 millivolt, I get an impedance spectrum. I apply 10 millivolt, I will probably get same impedance spectrum. If I apply 20 millivolts, it may deviate a little. If I apply 100 millivolts, it will change. That means, the approximations which we use there are no longer valid. If I use a large amplitude perturbation, I cannot make the approximation that e power x is 1 plus x. So, if we use large amplitude perturbation, we have to solve the actual equation. That is going to be valid even for small amplitude, but that is harder. So, we most of the time want to say that perturbation is small. I can linearize and solve and get analytical expressions. In this case, the analytical expression is at a given DC, this impedance can be represented by a resistor. At a different DC, it can be represented by another resistor, still a constant value now for that DC. 
So, the impedance spectrum that I get out of this will look like this solution resistance here R2 here CDL will give me the high frequency loop here. Because it is a simple resistor whether I go to 0 frequency or infinite frequency or anything in between I get the same resistance here it so happens RT and RP have the same value okay. Capacitor of course has 1 by j omega CDL and you can get the total impedance by adding the capacitor and this assuming solution resistance is 0. So, I can write an expression for total impedance if I am using a programming language I will write separate expressions for impedance part for the Faraday process I have separate expression for the capacitor I can add them in the correct way. At different EDCs 0 voltage I get one semicircle. 50 millivolts of DC I get another semicircle, 100 millivolts of DC I get another semicircle. This is what would happen if our solution resistance is 0, if our perturbation amplitude is small and if diffusion is not playing a significant role. DC current will look like this, this is what we calculated yesterday. I also want to show you what happens when you actually do this process. If I take ferro -ferry solution and measure the current as a function of potential it does not go exponentially it goes up and then saturates. Here the green color line or blue color line continuous lines are experimental data I think I have to I do not remember it well now okay. One of them is experimental another is model data later we will see how to calculate in presence of diffusion different rpm you will have different current levels. So, even if you go to high rpm it does not go as exponential 1600 is actually moderate you can go to few thousands it will still settle because diffusion will become rate limiting. This ferro -ferry reaction even if you go to 5000, 6000 rpm diffusion will not be so fast that you can ignore the contribution from mass transfer, you can ignore the resistance from mass transfer. If I take the impedance of this, this is how it looks. The first semicircle is actually coming from the reaction, second it is not a semicircle it looks like a distorted semicircle it is not a distorted semicircle either it is almost like a 45 degree line here with a curve here and we will give a proper expression for this it is possible to derive this. So, mass transfer is present we make the assumption that mass transfer resistance is not that significant so that we can derive these equations when mass transfer is coupled with this it is not that easy for a simple reaction you can derive for anything more complex it is very difficult. So, we will stop here today. So, in the last class we have seen some examples with EEC and how we can use the polarization resistance and charge transfer resistance to guess initial values and we have also seen the derivation of impedance equation, derivation of the current potential equation for a simple reaction. Today what I want to show you is derivation of impedance for a reaction with two steps ok. So, just to refresh your memory we have seen the reaction A going to B with an electron transfer and if you do an impedance calculation, if you calculate the impedance at various DC potentials we saw that we will get semicircles with different diameters. And the calculation also showed that if you calculate the current versus potential it is going to go as exponential when you are far away from 0, when you are at 0 potential that is at equilibrium potential it is going to be 0. This is what you predict if diffusion is not rate limiting and only kinetics are rate limiting. And we also saw examples where we showed that actually when you measure a different rpm current will increase with potential and then saturate because of diffusion. Similarly, if you go to the negative potential current will decrease and then saturate. Likewise, if you measure the impedance it is going to show you one semicircle corresponding to the charge transfer process that is corresponding to the kinetics and then another loop which is not really semicircle that comes from diffusion. So, diffusion is not really completely neglected it cannot be neglected when you are actually measuring for this particular reaction. So, whatever we have calculated or the equations we are derived are assuming the diffusion is very fast. We are going to do few more examples where diffusion is considered to be very fast mass transfer resistance is negligible.